Oh, just got back from a long day at work. I got my luggage, my notebook computer, my gym bag, everything in this 59 liters and nice and easy to install. All right, so let me show you all about this. So today I'm gonna to show you how to install the mounting plate on a BV400. So Shad makes a wonderful heavy duty, high quality mounting plate for pretty much all Shad top cases. It works with many other brands of top cases as well. But if you're looking for the best, I would just go for the Shad top cases. Many of the high-end ones are actually made in Barcelona and Spain, along with all their adapter plates. They're not low quality garbage, uh, like a lot of stuff we have these days. And we're at a much more affordable price zone compared to the factory top case. So MSRP on a factory top case is only 37 liters. You're looking about 500 bucks. Granted, it's gonna be color matched to the scooter. It doesn't have nearly as sophisticated a latch mechanism. It certainly isn't easily removable, as doesn't work quite as well as the Shad products. Um, so that's the benefit. But the downside, you know, it's not exactly color matched to the scooter. It's more of a universal appearance. And here we have the top of the line Shad top case. This is the SH59X, X for expandable. It's got a lot of hat tricks up its sleeve and I'll show you everything that this top case does. So check out what this top case does and then at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how to put this mounting plate on. Uh, pretty simple, a couple steps. Uh, if you put any of these top cases, any type of top case, you just can't just mount it to this grab rail on this BV400. You need to have that top case mounting plate. So the best part about the top of line Chad top case you know, the SH-59X um, or even the SH-58X. It's expandable, so it has a lot of hat tricks that will come in really useful, I think, you know, if you're using this top case for commuting or you're going on a weekend trip and you need the ultimate amount of volume. So, uh, first of all, it, you know, comes on and off the uh, top case plate really easily. You just put the key in, it has a high security pair of keys, and you put it in a release position. This, Pretty much just give that a little lift and it just snaps right on and then clicks right back in place and then you put it back into the open position and pretty much you got this this handle right here that snaps in place and when you want to release the handle as long as this key is in the open position it will release the handle if you put it in the closed position it's pretty much the whole top case is locked up and no one can get into it. Um, and you can even do that if you have the top case removed. You can kind of use this as locked uh, or unlocked luggage. So, but normal operation, maybe you're um, getting to work, you could just leave it in the open position, push it, release the case, and right under here, release the handle, and it has a nice mechanism that makes a nice distinct pop and it opens up the top case. So this has got some nice, um, rigidity to it. It's made of lightweight materials like thermoplastic and aluminum right here, which is really nice. It's got a very good weatherproof seal. They kind of take it to the next level. It's kind of an angular uh, double lip weather seal. So again, with the top of the line top cases, you get a lot of better deluxe features. So inside you got the luggage strap, kind of holds the helmets or whatever items you put in place. Say you put a duffel bag, but the magical hat trick of this top case that not to me, I haven't really seen any other brands is the position adjustment. And you release these two levers and you pretty much got three different positions. So you pretty much lift this, you can lift it all the way to the top and that's the maximum amount or you can go in between. So you got the mid, I'll kind of show how that looks. It's kind of the mid size kind of, I think proportionally it looks really good with the scooter in the mid, mid position, but maybe you need all the luggage you need. So we'll go ahead and open that up and release the red tabs and you just lift the, the, the front of the top case and snap both those uh, red latches in there. And now we're at the maximum 59 liter volume right here. So you're going for the, the very, very large volume of the top case that you may not need all the time, but gives you uh, lots of uh, space here. So, all right, quickly, all the tools needed to put this mounting plate on. 
So you're gonna need a drill with a step drill bit. Uh, it goes up to about three quarter inch or 18 millimeters. Uh, some other basic tools like a knife is gonna be very helpful. A scissors, set of little scissors, cut out this template. A T25 Torx driver. Uh, trim uh, pry tools, we have these available on the Scooter West web store and a five millimeter Allen key of some sort. All right, the first step to turning your BV400 into a touring machine is to put a top case mounting plate. So you pretty much got this little sporty tail, which is more or less a grab handle, but it's not too useful for strapping any luggage or putting a box on the top. So pretty much this shad adapter plate includes everything you need to have a nice, stable, strong mounting platform for your top case. So part number at the Scooter West web store, BV400-29-SH. And the shad stuff's just top-notch quality. Comes with a pretty decent set of instructions of everything you need to do. Pretty standard tools that you need. All the hardware. There's a template in there as well that help you out. Uh, you want to get a step drill because we'll be drilling this little plastic thing out. But we'll start by removing these screws on the bottom here. T25 Torx driver. So there's going to be four of them. Go ahead and get them all out of the way. And they're all the same length, so don't worry about it. And the last two screws, so you have six total screws. There's a pair that are kind of hidden up in the front up here. So both the left and the right side. At this point, you may want to have the pry tools if you don't want to make any pry marks in any of these plastic bits. As so you get all six of these screws out. And two things we need to pry out of here. So first of all, you got to get this plastic thing. It just pops right out. It's got nice little clips in here. All right. And once you get that top cover off, there's going to be a uh, number seven, number eight screw. Again, the same length as those six screws that we removed from the bottom here. Let's get those out of the way. And this piece will just pull away at this point. And it kind of pulls back and that separates, kind of gives it a really clean look underneath the rack, unlike some of the old ones that had this like honeycomb. Definitely cleaned up the look on these BV400s, kind of give them a more top-notch finish. So next we're gonna separate these uh, pair of metal reinforcement plates that are included with this shad mounting kit for the BV400. And if you're watching this in any other part of the world, the BB400, I call it the BB400. Everywhere else it's just called the Beverly 400S. But here in North America, I think they don't really wanna call it a Beverly for some reason. So you got the notch, that kind of just lines up like such. And you got this little reinforcement plate. It's something I've never seen on the Shad mounting kit, so it goes that way. So it kind of goes right up against that deal right there. Next, we're gonna go ahead and drill our um, plate out. And we're gonna go ahead and cut the templates out that are included on the second page of the instructions here. So just roughly cut this out. And it's not 100% critical on where you drill these holes. As long, it'll be completely covered up by the, pla the, the metal plate that's gonna go over top of this thing, so don't don't get too worried if you drill them, you know, even a quarter inch off and make them a little larger than they should be. You know, it's not, not gonna be the end of the world. So, got the two templates, you know, for the left and the right side. Go ahead and just nibble everything out. You don't even need to cut it all the way out. And you even got this one that drops on top of the um, thing. You can just carefully cut that out with a knife. So at this point, you see the template, kind of like it straddles this right here and just kind of goes like such, like that. So it kind of just goes right in there. And at this point, you can see they got two holes. They want them about three quarter inch or about 18 millimeters. I'm just gonna use my knife and make two like little center punch marks right here and right here. And we'll do the same with the other side. And again, you kind of cheat and not use the, um, cut the other side out. 
if you just want to be easy about it. So you could even reuse it. Since I made the little holes, they're gonna be in the exact same spot. So just right here, make my little center punch marks with a knife, obviously make sure you don't slice yourself there. So go ahead and chuck up a step bit. So this is a step bit goes up to seven eighths inch. Uh, you can get metric versions of these. They say 18 millimeters of instruction, but going up to three quarter inch, I actually marked it so it's like the third one from the last. And keep your hands out of the way. I have all those little center punch marks. And we'll just start drilling those holes out. I'll just start them small. And the last one right there. And at this point, you're gonna get a cleaner cut if you drill from the top, keep your hands out of the way. I'm just gonna go all the way to three quarter. Now I probably wouldn't even be too worried if I went one size too large. Nice and quick. So you get that all drilled out. Obviously leaves a lot of shavings behind. Take your knife if you want to deburr the holes, you know, get the, any burrs out of there, clean it up and make it look pretty. And we can just carefully snap this back into place. The only one thing that you're not gonna be able to do is uh, get to the fasteners under there. If there's the, the two fasteners there, uh, those are a little hard to get to. So we we'll just kind of ignore those because we want to put this plate in, in the way in place here. So there's going to be various spacers in this extra, this bag right here. So you got a 22 millimeter spacer and a 25 millimeter spacer. So the 22s, which are the slightly shorter ones, go towards the back. And the longer ones go towards the, the, the front of the scooter. So 22 millimeter, 25 millimeters on the back. So you have these two Washers have the 10 millimeter hole, the little bit larger hole. You want to just rest them right on top of all this stuff. So just kind of, you have the scooter on the center stand, kind of just got to uh, pull off a nice balancing act to get all these parts here. And it goes just like this. You got these two large holes here and then the two countersunk holes right there. Just carefully set this in place. So it's just kind of holding that. And we'll start with these countersunk screws right here. They kind of have that uh, flat head finish to them. Kind of just eyeball down the holes. Go ahead and drop both the screws in place. And then take your washers for the rear mass screws. These are called a button head screw. Put the washer on there. And again, kind of get everything lined up. Holes are nice and oval, so there's plenty of um, space to kind of eyeball and get everything lined up. And next you're going to need a four millimeter and a five millimeter Allen driver. And they have these really nice well nuts that go in from the bottom. So you only need a five millimeter Allen key and you go ahead and, you know, start the well nuts, kind of just get them up underneath in the hole. And, and of course, start everything loose. You know, don't go, don't go to town, just tightening one of them. And you, those go up in there. Everything loose at first. Kind of get everything positioned. So, and we'll do the frontmost fasteners. Pretty much same, same, same tricks right here. And just kind of go in between all the fasteners here. And if you want to torque them, they are eight millimeter fasteners, so about 15, 16 foot pounds. You'd want to torque them, but I think just. Cranking them is all you need to do, and they're gonna stay tight. If you ever take the case off, maybe you worth checking them. And like I said, it wasn't too critical about those holes you drilled in that plastic earlier step, so you just don't see any of that stuff. So now you wanna put this back into place. Uh, one thing you gotta keep in mind is the rearmost screws are a little bit long. Two ways to go about it. Of course, you can carefully cut those and tap them. But when you put it on, you can see it makes two little marks where those holes are a little large. And since it's underneath, you don't really see it, so I'm not too worried about it. Make two holes.
and clean up those holes. They look pretty clean already. Get the shavings out of there. And now this will fit without any issues whatsoever. Go ahead and put six of those screws back into place, just like when you removed it in the first place. And believe it or not, it doesn't really need those, those eighth, those last two holes up there. It's plenty of screws holding this plastic plate into place. So pretty much any aftermarket top case, uh, especially shad ones, they're gonna have a mounting plate. And that's the best part about the, the aftermarket top cases is you have the means to have a mounting plate that serves as your rack. And if you don't wanna rock the top case, uh, looks really nice with a rack. So uh, something, the factory case, I mean, you spend $500 for a color matched uh, 37 liter top case for the BV400. Of course it's color match, but I don't know, this bike's already kind of matte black and kind of um, many of the matte black top cases from Shad will just match just fine with this scooter. And you're gonna save a couple bucks. So we'll get this uh, mounting plate installed. If you're using this mounting plate with a different brand top case, you may need to drill holes in the metal. So we'll start the Shad top case, it, Mounting plates usually have a decorative color cover. You remove four screws, just a regular Phillips screwdriver. So pretty much any of the larger shad top cases, you know, 48 liter SH48, uh, SH49, or this ultra deluxe SH59 expandable. They're gonna come with a more deluxe mounting plate. Uh, it's a little better styled, looks a little cleaner. The smaller top cases, you know, the ones that are more in the, the sub $200, $100 range, they're gonna come with a much simpler mounting plate. So once you open this up, it exposes um, several of these fastener holes and pretty much we'll, we'll get a set of holes that all line up. So you can see it lines up right there. There's a hole here, a hole here, and a pair of holes in the back. And with the top case is a set of hardware. And I'm not gonna use all the hardware because it's fairly universal hardware. We'll go ahead and dump that out. You're gonna need four of these uh, spacers. And we'll start with the shorter screws. You got these short screws. They'll line up with those six millimeter holes in the mounting plate. So just tighten those down, make sure your other holes still line up. Might wanna sight all the holes. Not gonna go all the way tight with these yet. And then we'll use another pair of blocks for these holes. So it has various different mounting options. You know, even sometimes you use stuff like this, but not for this application since it's a specific uh, mounting rack you're pretty well set up. And we'll put the shorter screw in there and use a washer and a nylon locking nut that's included. So just use, for all the way around, we'll use the shorter screws. So go ahead and put a 10 millimeter combination wrench on these rear most nylon locking nuts because you're not gonna hold them by hand. And take a number three Phillips screw. You wanna tighten these fairly tight, not enough to crack these, the red spacers. Just go ahead and tighten these down. And then we can move up to the front, frontmost ones. And then we'll put the BD plate back in place. And now you have a pretty nice setup. And even if you don't have the top case, you got this pretty nice rack to, to strap a bag to if you needed. Maybe you're just going light for the day. Don't necessarily need the full top case. And at this point, all we do is snap the top case you know, of your liking. You know, like I said, pretty much all the Shad top case, they include the mounting plate. Very nice feature that's found with the aftermarket top cases. Uh, maybe you want to take this to the next level. Uh, I've shown in the past videos where you put a light bar back here. So underneath this mounting plate, we could put one of the add more light light bars. And that's a super ideal setup if you want to have, uh, you know, take the visibility on the rear of your scooter to the 10th degree here. So um, definitely an easy option to add, you know, snake the wire around. You've uh, look at my past videos on how to do that. So at this point, 
It's on there, it's very, very tight. Nice metal plate. And we'll snap the top case on and I'll show you how the top case works. So we're gonna go for the top of the line Shad SH-59X, expandable top case. It's super deluxe, it's built very, very well. It's thicker, it's double wall, uh, it's got aluminum top. It's just everything about it bleeds quality. And with these aftermarket top cases, you can start at the, the basic price point, like for SH-26, it's a great top case, it removes from a rack, but you're at the $100 price point. But pretty much you go up and you get what you pay for. So you're going much higher in top case and um, you're just gonna get a much better, everything about it's gonna be much better. All right, well, thanks for watching. Hope you found that pretty interesting, especially have a brand new BV400, you're thinking of look, looking for one. Uh, these scooters make an excellent touring rig or a commuting rig, either one. You know, it's like, I feel just as comfortable touring on this as a full-size adventure bike. Uh, the motor to highway is good. And of course, if you're going long distance or any overnight trips or just commuting to work or going grocery shopping, you need to have a little bit more storage. Believe it or not, having this top case in the generous underseat bay, you have more storage than most large size motorcycles, believe it or not, on a scooter that's an easy to use package. So something to keep in mind, word for thought, you know, anybody thinks, oh, I don't want a scooter. Um, believe me, it's a lot more convenient works better for commuting and so on. So, you know, just got back uh, from my grocery run. Let's pop my top case off and time to go home. See you on the next one. It's Robot here for Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. Uh, it's the first time across this channel. Check out our channel, Vespa Motorsport. Uh, tons of videos. Uh, BB400 is a pretty new product, so I don't have too many videos, but we have a lot of other accessories available at ScooterWest.com. See you on the next one. Robot here.